Are you finding that your MyFitnessPal logs are not that accurate and that you need to improve your food tracking technique? Well, this video is for you. Okay, so part of you is wondering, does this video even need to be made? Okay, something so simple as tracking food on a scale, does that even have to matter? Well, in actual fact, potentially yes. Something that I've seen time and time again with clients is that any error in the way that people track can result in errors in caloric intake that are much larger than you expect. And when you do that consistently over time, especially like errors over a particular day, and especially errors over a particular week, especially if it's week to week, you'll see those errors creep up, they'll compound, and what you'll notice next is that you're not actually in the caloric balance that you think you are. So that's why today's lesson will hopefully help you clarify some things and get you back on track with your tracking if it's something that needs to be worked on, okay? Potentially it doesn't, but potentially it does. So let's get started. As you can see here, I've got some items that I'm gonna be using. So obviously I'm gonna be measuring some liquids and some solids, just to give you an idea of what to consider when you're doing both. I'm gonna measure, just got some cottage cheese here, you know, nice and simple, just a basic sauce, just some mayonnaise, some cereal, some milk, and I've got my utensils here. So let's go, let's get into this. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna have a decent scale. Now, it doesn't have to be that expensive. This here is a relatively cheap one that I just got from Kmart. So it doesn't have to be an expensive one, but the more expensive you go, the better the scale. That's obvious, and the less likely that there's gonna be some error. The next thing you gotta realize is that scales over time will need some calibration. Now, generally with scales, unless they're more high end, you probably won't want to be calibrating or worrying about that, you just throw it away, buy a new one. But you wanna consider that over time, you may need a new scale. That's the second thing. And the third thing you gotta consider is you gotta separate things in terms of you know, wet foods and dry foods, or I guess, solid foods and liquid foods. Doesn't matter how you think about it, but you wanna separate both of those, because there's gonna be slight differences in the way you measure. So let's use an example, okay, let's get started. So let's say you wanna measure a sauce for dipping, or in, it, in any which way. What you can do is the following. Now I'm not actually going to be putting this in here because I'm not gonna be eating it afterwards, but just to give you an example, what you do is you place your plate or your bowl on the, on the food scale, and then you gotta make sure you're zeroing it out. On your scale, it may say tar or tear or however you wanna say it, or zero. Mine says zero. Either one will work. Point is that when the thing has to be on there, okay? The bowl has to be on there and it has to be zero. Done, okay? So the next thing you do is you can literally just put the sauce, squirt the sauce right in there where it needs to be. Or the alternative is this. Let's say that you have a sandwich on the side here and you just wanna figure out how much sauce you're gonna be putting on there. You can actually put the sauce bottle first on there, zero that out, then put it onto the sandwich put it back and measure. But that will rely on then just going with what is what is put on the sandwich. If you want to be more accurate, if you actually want to track specifically the amount of sauce you want, you want to be using this different method. Where you've got your plate there, you've got your sandwich there, putting it directly on the sandwich, measuring it, get more accuracy that way. So that's sauce, okay, very basic, very easy. Now, as you can see, sauce for some will be considered a wet food, it obviously is but some will consider it at fluid and then they will measure it as milliliters. You don't want to be doing that. Milliliters should only be reserved for things that are truly consistent in fluids like water, okay? So milk, soft drinks, juices, that sort of thing. Even oil, which I don't have an example here, but even oil, you want to be using it as a grams per gram kind of measurement because that's going to be more accurate and you want accuracy, right? That's what you want to be getting into. So now let's say that you want to be doing Cottage cheese, okay? Same thing, you put it there. Now, silly me, I forgot a spoon, okay? I didn't play for that perfectly, but pretend like you're putting a spoonful there. You directly measure it after you, you know, after you've zeroed it out, you measure it and you see what it is there. Likewise, similar to the sauce, you can also zero it out there and portion it from the thing if you don't really care too much about the specifics and you just wanna see how much you have. Either one works. Doesn't really matter, all depends on your own approach and your own goals. Now the big one I wanna talk about today is the cereal. Not necessarily because it's cereal, but because of the nature of how it's presented on food labels. 
and liquids. Okay, so let's get into it. So first thing we'll do is we'll get a bottle, put it there, zero it out, do all the basic stuff first. Done. All good. So now what I want to illustrate here is this particular cereal there. It says that one serve is one metric cup. Okay, one serve is one metric cup. So we'll measure likewise. Try and get as much accuracy as possible, but you know, do it whichever way which you want. Okay, if we measure it there, and as you can see, or you can't see, but I can see, 37 grams is that portion. Okay, 37 grams. But in actual fact, when you look on the on the uh, packet, it says 40 grams. That's three grams difference. Not not much difference at all. Okay, I wouldn't worry about that. But for some cereals, you will notice a 10 gram difference. Okay, or even more. And that's what you want to consider, is that you don't want to be using cups worth and logging that where possible. You want to be using grams, okay? Grams is the most accurate way you can track. Okay, so the one thing that you take away from this video is track in grams. That's going to be a lot more accurate for you, a lot more better. So we'll put this back here. And let's get into the milk. Okay, so what I'm trying to illustrate to you here is that milliliters is okay to use for milk, but it depends on your own scale and your own measurements and all that sort of stuff. Okay, I'm going to see how accurate mine is to show you what I mean here. Okay, so we've got that, we zeroed out the glass of milk. The first thing you want to do is change it to milliliters. Mine has two different forms of milliliters. I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what the differences are, I just know that the second one is the one that's more accurate. So, got it zeroed out, got it on mills, and let's go. Now, as you can see with my technique when I'm doing fluids, it's a bit in, a bit out, okay? The reason is that fluids will be like, will be, or the numbers will be like moving in and it'll suddenly shoot up higher than you expect. So you just want to do bit by bit to get more accurate. There we go, nearly there. There we go, I overshot it by seven milliliters. Not a big deal, okay? Not a big deal at all. So I'll put that back there. Now we've got there 256 milliliters, okay, 256 milliliters. So now we're going to try this while I've got this jug here, is I'm literally going to put it into the measuring cup and see how accurate that is, because it should show up on here around that 250. So let's see how we go. Okay, we'll find the right amount there. There we go. Pour it in there. Okay, now let's go level so we can get more accuracy, of course. <laughs> And I can see there that that is pretty much level at 250 milliliters. It's a cup just as much as I thought it would be. But because, that, because of that finding, I can now deem that my scales when I'm using milliliters for something that has the consistency of water, such as milk, such as drinks and fluids of that nature, I'm going to get a lot of accuracy by using the mills. And therefore, I can log the mills in my fitness pal. Okay? Grams and mills, they're your priorities. Of course, yes, you can use cups, you can use tablespoons, you can use that sort of stuff but they're generally not going to be as accurate and there are going to be some discrepancies. As you notice, there was a free uh, gram discrepancy for the cereal, but I've seen higher amounts of that. Okay, I've seen up to 10 grams or more difference and depending on the product, you'll notice a lot of caloric difference there, especially if it's like a nutty based kind of cluster oat meal type thing, you'll notice a significant amount of difference for even just 10 grams. So trust me, you want to be accurate because it can be the difference between you being in a deficit and being in a surplus or being in maintenance. And then what happens is over time, you'll notice that your results are not being achieved. And you're wondering why, because you're tracking as best as you can. But in actual fact, what you need to do is audit your approach, audit the system you're using, okay? The technique you're using, so to speak, to be more accurate. And that's what this video is about, is to kind of get you to question, how accurate is your technique? Do you need to audit it? Do you need to recheck and make sure that you're doing things accurately? Obviously, aside from this, the next level thing you want to be considering is how accurate is the log in my fitness pal? Because one of the big things that I see sometimes with clients, not often, but sometimes, is choosing the wrong option in my fitness pal will have a huge difference in caloric intake. Because the thing is, my fitness pal, a lot of that is user data that's been put in there. So if someone's putting in data that's really, really incorrect, which I have seen. I saw one so it was like a chicken serve, and it was like 100 grams of chicken was like, 600, 700 calories, like it, was, like it was offset by heaps. If something like that happens, your caloric intake will be way off, okay? You won't be accurate, not with any degree of closeness, okay? It will be completely off. 
then that will be the difference maker for you. So that's the second thing you can consider. This is first, but also make sure that your My Fitness Power logs are consistent. Okay, so hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial. Okay, and in case you're wondering, by the way, the reason I'm sitting is because I'm six foot four, I couldn't get a good camera angle in the kitchen. So that's why I'm sitting down at my table here. So hopefully that explains that because I'm sure you're used to people being in the kitchen doing these demonstrations. But yeah, just wanted to explain in case you thought I was weird, which I'm not too weird. Okay, not too weird. So yeah, there we go. Source, two techniques you can use. You can zero it out at the bottom, put it onto the product, put it back, measure. Or you can put the plate on, zero it, put it on there. That's more accurate and you're going to be more specific to the brand that way. For things such as this where you literally scoop things out, yogurts, cottage cheese, you name it. Obviously then you would just do the exact same method which way you feel is fit for you. For fluids, milliliters if it's a true fluid. If your scale is accurate, the number one thing you got to realize is you want to be measuring on your scale and checking exactly what I did there to make sure yours is accurate. If it's not, you can count the difference or you can just go into measuring grams and figure out from there. And then obviously, lastly, cereal and things of that nature where the serving size in the packet may say half a cup, half, you know, a quarter of a cup or a full cup. You want to check first, make sure there's accuracy and measure in grams where possible. Obviously, when things cooked and uncooked, there's going to be differences, especially for things such as rice and pasta. So make sure there is accuracy there and you're double checking using the systems, you know, using certain things on the internet, perhaps Calorie King or just my fitness pal to double check. Um, you can use USDA as well if you're in these states and you need something more accurate to base on. But yeah, hopefully that explains that. Hopefully this tutorial has helped. If it has, please hit a, hit a like, okay? Show me uh, some love, show this video some love. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you soon. Stay classy, have a good one.